everybody, I'm Susan Mulvihill. And keeping with my theme of getting ready for the 2023 gardening season, I'm going to talk today about crop rotation. Now, before you click away from this video, hear me out for just a moment because it will make a big difference. Crop rotation is a great tool. You can use it even with little gardens. And the idea behind it is to prevent or greatly reduce the chances of vegetable plant diseases and certain types of vegetable garden insect pests. Interested? Okay, let's get right to it. Crop rotation refers to growing different types of crops in different areas of your garden every year. If you plant the same type of crop in the same bed year after year, there are three problems that can come up. The first one has to do with disease. Let's say last year you had a disease that affected your tomato plants. If you plant the tomatoes again this year in the same bed, those pathogens are already in the soil and very likely will infect this year's tomato plants. You don't want that to happen. Another thing that can happen when you grow the same type of crop in the same spot year after year, and if you're not good about replenishing nutrients in the soil, there are going to be some important nutrients that are depleted within that bed soil. And the third thing that can happen is if you also have an insect problem, it's very likely that the insect has overwintered in the soil in the bed. It will emerge this spring and start the problems all over again. So that's why I wanted to talk about crop rotation today because it's a simple tool that you can do to keep your plants more healthy. So let's talk about how you do crop rotation. The first thing you need to know is your vegetable plant families. But don't worry because I have a chart that gives all of the information to you. So if you go to my website, susansinthegarden.com, and then go to the guides menu, just go down to vegetable plant families. And here it is. I'm just going to move it up here on the screen so you can see it. So there are different types of plant families. You've probably heard of a couple of them. For example, you've probably heard of the nightshade family. And members of that family are eggplant, pepper, potato, tomatillo, and tomato. Another one you've probably heard of is the brassica family. And so this one has all sorts of members, arugula, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, cauliflower, collards, kale, kohlrabi, mustard, radish, rutabaga, and turnips. So those are just two examples of about a dozen different vegetable plant families. This information is important because let's look at that example again of, of disease perhaps being a problem for you last year with your tomato plants. When you're doing crop rotation, and I'm going to demonstrate it in just a moment, in addition to not planting your tomato plants in that bed where you had problems with a disease, it's also important not to use that bed to plant eggplant, pepper, potato, or tomatillos because they're all in the same family and as such, they can be susceptible to particular diseases. Remember how in my last video I made the suggestion of creating a template of your garden layout for each year? Well, here's my layout. And yes, I have a big garden, but this is going to apply to smaller gardens as well. So I created a template in Word on my computer, and each year I just print out a blank copy of it, and I use it to decide where I'm going to grow different types of crops. So now let me show you exactly how I do it. Every year I hang on to my newest layout of the garden, and I keep a few years' records because I want to be able to refer back to them when I'm deciding the next year's layout. So you can see I've got a layout for 2020, 2021, 
2022 and 2023. Some of them are a little neater than others, but you get the idea. And I know my vegetable plant families, because I've been doing this for so long, usually what I do when I'm ready to lay out the new season's garden is I pull out the most recent two or three years worth of layouts and I start with plants that are members of the nightshade family. So tomatoes, eggplants, peppers, potatoes, and tomatillos. And I decide where I want to plant them in the new garden. And so I'll go through the most recent layouts and see, okay, where did I plant any of those crops? And then I find a different bed to grow them in for this year. Then maybe I'll go to the cucurbits. So those are cucumbers, melons, pumpkins, summer and winter squash. And I'll see where I grew them and pick a new spot to grow them this year. So that is my routine. It sounds a little tedious, but actually once you get the hang of it, it goes pretty quickly. But I just kind of go plant family by plant family. I think of all the plant families, the ones that I am the most careful about rotating would be the nightshade family, the onion family, the cucurbits, and the brassicas. But again, that's my routine. I just take a blank template. I look at where plants were grown the previous two or three years, and then I decide on new spots for everything to grow. Now I promised early on in this video that there is still a way to do a form of crop rotation even if you have a very small garden. And the idea is to take note of any disease issues that you might be having. So let's say one year you grow everything in the ground in your garden plot and you notice that the tomatoes, I'm picking on tomatoes today, had a problem with some type of a wilt problem or other type of disease. You would grow those in containers the next year or two or three before growing them back in the ground. And that's because a lot of times the pathogens will remain in the soil. So if you grow your tomatoes, for example, in containers that are, have been cleaned first, that have fresh potting soil, nothing that anything diseased grew in, then that would be a way to grow them that next year and then sterilize your pots, get new potting soil, and grow them the following year in containers. So, you know, give it a few years of being out of that garden soil. And hopefully those pathogens will die because they haven't got target plants. So that's my idea. Now, one of the thing that I wanted to mention, and this applies to everyone, is if you are having problems with plant diseases year after year with a specific type of a crop, let's say, and you know what the disease is, the next time you're shopping for seeds, either in a garden center, online, or in a seed catalog, look for the little abbreviations that designate that the variety is resistant to the disease that you've been having a problem with. Now, as many of you know, I have a brand new book coming out, The Vegetable Garden Problem Solver Handbook. And one of the things that's in it is a chart that I made that's of all of the abbreviations for the different types of plant diseases that you might see either in a seed catalog or on a seed packet. So that will help you find things that are resistant to a disease that you're dealing with. So that is definitely another option. I hope this video made sense and that you can see why crop rotation is a simple tool to keep our gardens healthier. And I believe that is why our garden is so healthy year after year, because I took a few minutes to think about where I wanted to grow each crop. Thanks so much for watching today, everybody. Next week's video is on seed starting and the garden season is getting closer. See you in a week.